let's discuss the algorithm for FCFS, the uh, detailed steps that you have to follow to write code for the simulation of FCFS. So first of all, the first step is you have to create an array of processes, array of structures that we just discussed. And then um, also get the number of processes from user. Uh, you may fix this at the start. You may fix the number of processes at the start and do the rest of your uh, code. But at the end, do uh, do this. Do, do take the number of processes from user and uh, to keep it flexible. Okay, the second step is get the ID and service time of each process from the user. So what what is this step? This is actually this you will take these two things this ID and this service time from the user. So that's the second step and third step is set the waiting time of the pro first process as zero and total time of the first process as its service time and we have discussed it, this in detail in, in the previous slide and in the pre previous video, videos as well. Step 4 will be calculate the total time and waiting time for the remaining process. We have covered this in detail and what are we talking about? We are actually talking about this. You have to calculate the waiting time and the total time and in the same way, in the same manner. You have understood this concept, you can make your logic for this. Okay. Um, the, the step five is actually just defining what is waiting time. Waiting time of one process is the total service time of all previous processes. And total time of any process is calculated by the formula that we have learned, waiting time plus service time. So this is how you will do it. And then at the end, when you have calculated the waiting time and total time of all the processes in your array, then you will um, define an integer variable, a single integer variable named as total waiting time and another with the name total turnaround time. You will define these two variables and in the total waiting time, you will uh, sum up the waiting time of all the processes in the array. And, and same goes for this. In the total turnaround time uh, variable, you will sum, you will calculate the total time of all the processes in the array. And at the end, divide the, this number, divide the total uh, turnaround time or waiting time with the number of processes and you will get average waiting time. So you have to calculate these two variables too. And at the end, display your result in this form. So you will um, see And at the end, display your result in this format. This is how you access a uh, structure map. Let's discuss the same steps for SJF. So actually, all these steps are same. So for SJF, shortest job first, for this algorithm, all the steps are exactly the same as first come, first serve algorithm. Everything is same except this four step. So before calculating the total time and waiting time of the processes, you have to sort the array. You have to sort the array on the basis of what? On the basis of, this is SJF, shortest job first. So you have to sort the array on the basis of service time in the ascending order. So that uh, whichever process has the least service time will be executed first, will come first. So you, you just have to sort the array in ascending order on the basis of service time. This is just two, three lines of code. You can use bubble sort here. And the rest of the code is, is exa exactly the same. There is no difference. Okay, one more hint. If you get your answers in negative or you get garbage values, this is probably because you have done calculations on variables without initializing them. So that's why you're getting garbage values. To avoid that, initialize all your integer members of the structure with zero at the very start of the code. So initialize them with zero at the very start of the code so that uh, there is no chance of you making a mistake of using any variable uh, for calculation without initializing it. Do that. 